Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting case. It's a very complex case, a very rare case. So what the heck is going on here? I'm just going to right off the bat tell you what I think is going on here and then I'll explain all the medical jargon as we go along. But this is clearly an infected mastoid cavity and it's probably been infected for a long time because you can see there's granulation lurking back there just to the right of the sucker. Um, and there's just pus everywhere. Now we think that, well, there's definitely one canal cholesteatoma in there and possibly another, but it's hidden behind the temporomandibular joint. And if we are right, then that patient will either need a condylectomy where the surgeon will have to remove part of the jaw joint, or we might be able to do it endoscopically. Um, but either way, this is a very bad case and it's an unfortunate case. Um, this chap is not immunocompromised or diabetic. Um, he's, he's younger than me, actually. But we think that the, the reason for this recurrent infection and granulation, subsequent granulation tissue is because of the canal cholesteatomas, clearly. So anyway, I've kind of splurged all of that technical medical jargon at you. So let me break it down for you and um, I'll tell you what I think. So uh, I started the jargon by saying that it was an infected mastoid cavity and yeah, you don't have to be an expert or a scientist or a doctor to work out that there's an infection here because of the amount of pus. And pus is, you know, a sign that the, the patient's immune system is responding to a pathogen. And that's what, you know, pus is just basically lots and lots and lots of dead white blood cells which die when they attack the bacteria, along with exudate and dead skin and so on and so forth. And, um, it's a mastoid cavity. Now, that's a little bit more difficult to explain if you've not watched a lot of these videos before. But essentially, a mastoid cavity is where a surgeon, a, a particular specialist type of surgeon, or an ear, nose and throat surgeon, has gone in and basically artificially sort of enlarged the, the ear canal by, by drilling away some of the mastoid bone. So if we think about the anatomy of the skull, um, and most people know that the back of your skull is, is the uh, occipital part of the skull. This is the parietal bone here. This is the maxilla, where your cheeks are. This is the mandible, your jaw. The part of the skull that's kind of to, off to the side here, around the ear and the temple region, that's the temporal bone, okay? Temporal means time, and this is typically where men start to go gray, signaling the passing of time. So temporal bone specifically the part of the temporal bone that surrounds the ear structures it has a special name it's called the mastoid bone and it's um it's quite an unusual bone in the sense that it's got lots of air cells inside of it so it looks kind of porous not like spongy bone but it's um it's kind of porous with all these air cells and it's almost like a system really like a, a ventilation and air system and um what happens sometimes, you can get a, an infection of the mastoid bone, which is called mastoiditis, and that might require a surgeon to drill away and create a mastoid cavity. But more likely, I think in this case, the patient has had a cholesteatoma, uh, which is basically where you have a, a kind of growing sac or mass of dead skin, which is then invading the middle ear space and into the mastoid antrum. And it must have been quite a, an extensive operation because this is clearly a canal wall down mastoidectomy. So there's no semblance of a normal posterior architecture here. It's all just it's all just a bit of a mess, really. And if you're looking into this ear and you're thinking, I don't know what the heck I'm looking at, that's okay. Because unless you're an ENT surgeon and you have a particular interest and talent for doing mastoid operations, I think most people, doctors or non-doctors, would look at this ear and think, what in the world is going on here? And mastoid cavities, although they are difficult to navigate and clean, I actually quite enjoy cleaning them because it's difficult, it's challenging, and you, you don't really know the perimeters of normal anatomy. So um, carefully, carefully, slowly, slowly is the modus operandi here. So an infected mastoid cavity. Now, I then mentioned that this patient definitely has one canal cholesteatoma, and that's where my sucker is at the moment. A canal cholesteatoma is perhaps rarer, I think, compared to middle ear cholesteatomas, which is what have, would have necessitated the mastoid cavity to begin with, 
oddly enough. But a canal cholesteatoma is where you have your ear canal, or in this case, what's left of it, and you have a, a trench or a depression or a hollow or a divot, whatever, in the, in the ear canal, and dead skin starts to collect in that depression. And then it gets worse and worse, the bone starts eroding and so on and so forth. And that trench, right when you go into the ear, it's off to the right-hand side, lower right-hand side, but that trench is super deep. You can't see the bottom of it. Now, in part two of this video, which I'll upload next week, we will go in there with an angled scope and I'll try and photograph it nicely, but it's really difficult. In fact, as a side point, you can see the granulation tissue there, that's pretty nice. It's that kind of like a highly vascularized kind of red raspberry-like tissue. So that's the body trying to heal some damage. Um, as a general point, I would say the, the suction, this suction is ex extremely difficult um, because the, the entrance to the ear, although it's a nice wide gnarly mastoid cavity, the entrance to the cavity is really finicky and narrow. It's actually really difficult for me to kind of get a good angle. And I've got this chap kind of lying back in the chair in different angles, but it's still, you know, normally I would just kind of pull that debris down or I would get my suction probe right in there. But I'm, I'm actually got quite a lot of length on the suction probe and it's still not enough. Um, so, and also, it doesn't come across in the video, but this guy's mastoid cavity is tender. It's sore, it's really sore. The slightest bit of pressure in the wrong area and he's really uncomfortable. More so, he's, yeah, see right, right here, where the suction probe is resting on, this right-hand side, this bulge, he does not like that. The slightest bit of pressure on this bulge, which we think is kind of where the TMJ is, roughly. Um, he does not like that. So I'm really having to tread very, very carefully here. So, it, you know, anything more than a slight glide against the tissue and he's uh, in, in quite a bit of discomfort. Right where the sucker is there, that's where I think the eardrum is, but I just can't. I just can't get to it. I just don't have enough length. And um, really this guy might need to be numbed up to clean it properly. But um, anyway, so he has one canal cholestatoma where I showed you. And then I mentioned that the other one might be behind the TMJ. What the heck is that? So again, if you think about the anatomy of the skull, um, if you ever look at a skull actually, you know, you'll, you'll be able to identify the ear canal, which just looks like a hole. But then, remember your, your jaw, this lower jaw here is the mandible. And of course the jaw joint is slap bang next to the ear canal. And therefore it is, which is part of the temporal bone, remember. So therefore it is the temporomandible, mandibular joint. Okay, so jaw joint. And um, often when you look in an ear, like a normal ear, you will often see that before you get to the eardrum, there's this bulge anteriorly, whether it's, you know, most people have this bulge. And um, that's the bulge of the temporomandibular joint. So we think that there's, there's some kind of weird, you know, debris, collection of debris that we just can't get hidden behind this, um, this joint. And we think that there's another canal cholesterol there. So by we, I mean my friend, myself and my friend Anavan, who's an ENT surgeon, who's looked at this chap and uh, we, we th so what he said is that the guy definitely needs an operation. So I originally sent him to Anavan because I thought, oh, this is a nice infected mastoid cavity and it's clearly been infected for ages. He would probably benefit from a mastoid obliteration surgery, which is why I originally referred him. I didn't refer him thinking that there would be all these canal cholesterol in there. And um, a mastoid obliteration, uh, Vic Veer's done a really good video on mastoid obliteration, but essentially ob obliterate kind of means to destroy everything, like, you know, put a stick of TNT in there and just blow it to smithereens. But actually obliteration in this case means that you're filling in the space. I know that sounds kind of weird, but if you've got a cavity, a particularly gnarly cavity like this one, which is just getting infected all the time, then what the surgeon would do is somehow, you know, try and get rid of this cavity by filling it in or, you know, I guess in Vic Veer's video, he said about, you know, packing the, the, the cavity with fat and then swinging some muscle down. So right here, kind of over the top of the ear in a fan shape, 
you have your, uh, what is it called, your temporalis muscle, okay? That actually helps you with chewing. Um, and I think what he's getting at is that sometimes when you do a mastoid obliteration, you can pack the cavity with whatever, and then you can swing some of that muscle down to cover the cavity and create some kind of semblance of a, a posterior wall, possibly. So anyway, I thought given that he's a young chap and it's clearly getting infected all the time, perhaps Anavan can obliterate the cavity. Um, but what happened was he called me uh, the same night that he saw the patient and uh, this is his kind of working theory that there's uh, a canal cholesterol uh, hidden behind the TMJ, which might result in a condylectomy, and a condylectomy is removing part of the, the jaw joint, okay, which would be less than ideal. Um, or we could do it endoscopically, in which case I would hold the scopes, and that would free up both of Anavan's hands to do the, to do the operating. So hopefully we can do it that way. But a uh, very, very interesting case. Unfortunately, and this is this guy's not had much luck. His other ear is not as bad, but it's had some really extensive surgery and it just it it just looks a, a bit of a mess to be frank with you. You know, there's nothing normal about this chap's ears. Um, he can hear okay actually. You'd be surprised. He can hear not too bad, but um this needs to be dealt with. So we're just going to try and pull down this bit of debris here. But again, it's extremely difficult. Not only is he kind of at this weird angle and he's kind of sitting back in his chair, I'm also kind of crouched down and I've got, on the desk, I've got several Zolna suction probes, all with kind of weird bends in them. So they all come out of the packet with, you know, kind of like a standard, I don't know, 30 degree bend on it. And then I've got various like second and third bends on the suction probe and I've got fine ends and it's, it's all just a bit weird because I'm just kind of customizing these medical devices, which I don't know if that's okay. It's probably against the rules somewhere, but I'm basically bending these on the probes according to my taste to, to try and get in here. Here is where I would really like to clear it all out, but it's just not accessible. I mean, I'm really pushing the envelope here. He does not like this one wrong move and he's he's in quite significant pain here yeah there's no way that i can really scoot around here bear in mind that this suction probe and fine end has got like some weird compound bends on the metal it's it's just not not viable it'd be viable if he was numbed up because then i could just apply as much pressure as i wanted but um i don't have that luxury eardrums probably lurking around there but i just by this point we've been going for well the video's been running for nearly 13 minutes or so but he's been in the chair for like nearly an hour uh so it's just it's this video is really highly edited to sort of cut out all the boring bits but at least from where he started this is not too bad um and i kind of feel like we're heading in the right direction with this guy but it's Hopefully I can film the surgery. That would be fantastic. Um, just trying to get this last little bit, but no, it's not happening. He's had enough. He's had enough. He wants out of the chair and I also want to give my shoulders a rest. So, and that is the other thing. If you ever watch these videos, whether it's myself, Neil, Reese, uh, or Richard or whoever, if it's a particularly long video, I can guarantee you that by the end of the procedure, the shoulders are really, really aching. Because again, we're, we're doing that all the time. You have to be kind of stuck in this position. So, you know, by the time I'm 50, my rotator cuffs are probably gonna be absolutely shot to pieces. There we go. I hope you found that video interesting. The next part of the video is where the patient will come back having seen Anavan for some more suction. It looks a little bloody, but it's fine. We're going to try and get us an angled scope in there so I can look down inside that first cal canal cholesteatoma. I'll try and clean it out a bit, but my God, it's difficult. It is so difficult. So anyway, without further ado, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys very shortly on the next video.